This episode of Spectre Sound Studios is brought to you by Sweetwater. Greetings, fellow recording nerds, and welcome back to another episode of the SMG Chopping Block. Now, one of the most common questions you guys have asked me is, Glenn, what kind of mic should I buy? I don't have a lot of money to spend. Glenn, what kind of mic should I buy? I don't have a lot of money to spend. Well, in order to help you guys out, today we're going to check out five mics under 100 bucks that don't completely suck. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are young and you're probably still in school, so saving up for a mic can be tough. And seeing just how many dirt cheap mics there are out there these days, it can get pretty easy to get lost in a sea of endless options. Now, to help you guys pick out a decent mic, I've teamed up with the guys over at Sweetwater and they sent me this whole pile of microphones to check out. Who knows, we might even find a hidden gem in here. Now don't burn me at the stake over this, but two of the five mics in this list are actually just a little bit over the $100 mark, which is fine. A few dollars really isn't going to be stretching it when you're looking for a halfway decent mic. So if one of them sounds promising to your ears and you don't have the extra few bucks, just skip your next trip to Starbucks or the liquor store and you should be just fine. So on the chopping block today, we have five condenser mics. We've got the PreSonus M7 for $69.95, the Samson C01 at $79.99, the Shure PGA 181 at $94, the AKG P120 at $105, and the SE Electronics X1A at $109.99. Now, because nobody out there really wants to hear me sing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare these mics and how they sound for voiceover, guitar cab, and acoustic guitar. My goal is to see how each of them perform for the specific task and to find out if some of them might be good at more than just one application. Here we go. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced with something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory that states that this has already happened. The major problem, one of the major problems, for there are several, one of the many major problems with governing people is that of whom you get to do it, or rather, of who manages to get people to let them do it to them. To summarize, it is a well-known fact that those people who must want to rule people are, is po facto, those least suited to do it. To summarize the summary, anyone who is capable of getting themselves made president should on no account be allowed to do the job. It is worth repeating at this point the theories that Ford had come up with on his first encounter with human beings to account for their peculiar habit of continually stating and restating the very, very obvious as in, it's a nice day, or you're very tall, or so this is it, we're going to die. His first theory was that if human beings didn't keep exercising their lips, their mouths probably shriveled up. After a few months of observation, he had come up with a second theory, which was this. If human beings don't keep exercising their lips, their brains start working. Now, Samson do make some pretty decent stuff for not a whole lot of money. A couple of years ago, I actually checked out the DK707 drum mic package, which only cost 299 bucks. Nowadays, I'm mostly working with the Lewitt stuff because they're really fucking great mics. But if you're just starting out and you don't want to spend a grand on a set of Lewitts, maybe go check out the Samsons because they're pretty decent for entry level mics. The history of every major galactic civilization tends to pass through three distinct and recognizable phases, those of survival, inquiry, and sophistication, otherwise known as the how, why, and where phases. For instance, the first phase is characterized by the question, how can we eat? The second by the question, why do we eat? And the third question, where shall we have lunch? Uh, gotta say, I think the issue here with the AKG is a little bit of a... Uh it's really sensitive to shocks and you can just hear a little bit of you know, resonance even when you talk into the mic. So this one is definitely not suited for voiceover unless you're going to put it in a shock mount and I'm not even sure how good it's going to be for the job then. Um, I got to say big red flag on this one for this particular application. Now this is the Shure mic and I got to say this one is really sensitive to your position. Like if you're just a little bit off axis like this and this, you're going to run into issues. So make sure you're dead on here. So let's, let's give this a shot. Your God person puts an apple tree in the middle of a garden and says, do what you like guys, but oh, don't eat the apple. Surprise, surprise, they eat it and he leaps out from behind a bush shouting, gotcha. 
It wouldn't have made any difference if they hadn't eaten it. Well, why not? Because if you're dealing with somebody who has that sort of mentality, which likes leaving hats on pavement with bricks under them, you know perfectly well they won't give up. They'll get you in the end. Sure, our legendary brand, and you can hear their microphones on countless records made throughout the decades. The SM57 is a studio staple, and there's good reason for it, as it's wound up as the go-to mic for guitar caps, snare drums, and a whole bunch of other instruments. The SM7 is a favorite vocal mic among the Cookie Monster crowd, and it was even used by Michael Jackson for his Billie Jean vocal. I think Sure can be considered legendary status when it comes to the SM7 design, and it's certainly one of my favorite mics for voiceover. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it to summarize, it is a well-known fact that those people who must want to rule people are, his first theory was that if human beings didn't keep exercising their lips, otherwise known as the how, why, and where phases. For instance, your god person puts an apple tree in the middle of a garden and says, do what you like, guys, but oh, don't eat the apple. After checking out these mics on the various sources and whatnot where I'd use them, that kind of thing. I mean, like, yeah, they're all right around the $100 mark. Uh, I think the best all-arounder is the Shure. It sounded pretty damn good on the acoustic guitar and voiceover. Wasn't a half-bad guitar mic, like for miking up a cabinet, that kind of thing. But honestly, my favorite for the guitar cab was the AKG, and this was great on an acoustic as well. Oddly enough, it was the worst on the desktop because of just how it picks up Oh, wow. You can actually, if you tap this, you can feel 
the uh, the body of the mic resonate. That's where that sounds coming. It's just going ding. So I don't know. Maybe if somebody jammed some foam up in there, that might help. Obviously, a shock mount would probably help as well. So if you want to get a good hundred dollar mic and not planning on doing a lot of desktop narration, that kind of thing, grab the AKG. It's pretty well. If you need a great all rounder, I'd say get the Shure. Um, I was pretty surprised by the Samson as well. That was a pretty decent mic especially on acoustic guitar. That was rather surprising. It wasn't half bad on the metal guitar as well. The SE, I felt, could be a little bit better, to be honest with you. It was probably one of my least favorite mics. And the absolute worst out of the bunch is the Presonus. Uh, this mic is, well, for lack of a better word, dog shit. It's really quite terrible, and uh, Presonus should be embarrassed to be offering this one up, to be honest with you. Um, I found it's very similar to that really shitty U87 clone I found on AliExpress there a few months back. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's using the same capsule because uh, the mic just disintegrated under the volume of the guitar cab. And it's not very good on acoustic. It's got just this really nasty sound to it. And it's not really suited for voice either. So yeah, avoid this one to the plague. I've got to retitle this video for mics for under 100 bucks that don't completely suck because uh, the Presonus here definitely completely sucks. Overall, I'm pretty surprised at the results I got out of these mics. There's some serious value for the money to be found in here. That's the great thing about these newer modern microphones. Most of them are designed by reputable gear companies, but the manufacturing is done overseas by slave labor to keep the cost down. Now, some of these mass-produced mics can be a little bit on the thin and shrill side, but if you know what to look for, it really doesn't matter how limited your budget is anymore. Because even with the cheaper mics, you can still get some pretty great results, and they can help you get your feet wet if you're just starting out. Now, my first condensers were a pair of the original Rode NT1s that I bought back in the 90s, and honestly, some of the mics I tried today would probably give those a run for their money. If you want to check out any of these mics, you can find them all over on Sweetwater.com. And yes, I'm going to be providing affiliate links in the description below. So click one of them and help out the show. All right, that's it for this episode. If you want to see more budget gear on the SMG chopping block, leave a comment below and let us know what you'd like to see put to the test. All right, show's over. Now go do some work, you lazy fucks. <music> Greetings, fellow recording nudes, and now uh, what will come as a surprise? Now, I'm sure this is... Now, some mass-produced mics can be a little bit on the th ah, thin and shrill. Thin and thrill? Yeah, there we go. One more time. All right.